Look at that, there's an all new electric vehicle coming and this is the Cupra Born. It's a sibling of the Volkswagen ID3, so they use the same all electric platform, rear wheel driven. But you can see here, they have a sportier approach. Look at this front with a typical Cupra copper accentuation. Yeah, the logo always looks a little bit tribal style, don't you think so? What do you think about the logo? But I think, you know, my, my favorite feature is here the Cupra lettering and copper again, and this lip that really looks almost kind of supercar alike and then once again a copper accentuation in a lower spoiler right here the sensors are neatly hidden behind this area so what a cool sporty look so the Volkswagen ID3 looked more like yeah very vanish alike this one yeah almost supercar look in the front also with the full LED lamps here with the daytime running light and the interesting thing is here this concept started out to be the Seat El Born so Cupra then, being the sporty brand of the Seat Corporation, they said, yeah, why don't we make it a little bit sportier and then put it as a, as a Cupra brand. And Elborn, see it in the background here, city of Barcelona. Elborn is a quarter of Barcelona. And then they said, well, in Spanish it would be then the Elborn would be El Elborn. And also internationally wise, Elborn would be too complicated. So they went just for the name Born, Cupra Born. And they also said it's like born of a new era and so on. So a very interesting approach, making the Volkswagen ID3 sportier. And it's also even more interesting because they want to be a little bit more global. EU is the core market, but they also want to export it to Mexico and Australia. They're looking into the markets. And if you want to see this one here in the US, then put it in the comments and maybe they think about it. Look at that here, the side profile. Short hood because of this, you know, EV long wheelbase using the interior. 20 inch wheels, pretty massive in this, I would say, disc brake style. They start from 18 inch. These here are the biggest one. The color is called Aurora Blue and it's really fitting both exterior and interior. It's a nice nuance in this color. Dropping line here at the side and this is a very interesting design element. Look at that here. Looks like a very aerodynamic design element at the side, really catches your attention. So they paid a lot of detail to the design, both exterior and interior. The interior will be striking, also look forward to that. And then uh, it's a very strong C-pillar right here and this stamped inside, you can really feel these design elements right here. Soon we'll also talk about the range and so on. Let's first finish our design and re looking forward to your comment. What do you think about this all new EV already from the looks? Wow, the copper accentuations for the Cooper here work extremely well, especially with the blue vehicle color. And here at the rear, you can see the light strip goes all around the vehicle in the rear. That's really fancy. And then you can see a strong bumper in the lower area, diffuser style, like a race car. That's where Cupra Cup Racing all, you know, initially comes from. Once again, the Cupra born. This will, of course, be the place for the real number plate. Top speed will be 160 kilometers an hour for the base horsepower version and then for the higher horsepower version 180 kilometers an hour or 112 miles per hour and that's already quite reasonable for electric vehicle. There's an interesting option because you can get the tires optionally a little bit wider. Also you can see it right here already quite massive and when the tires are wider then you will also have the option to turn off the ESC and this is a rear-wheel driven car remember that with this platform and when you then can deactivate the ESC you can really have a lot of fun with that of course rather on closed roads and so on yes <laughs> and important for the color choice is this element right here so it's in gray and that works with the blue car it's not too big of a contrast here with the Aurora blue so definitely go for this color it would be my tip for today because when you look at here the mist gray so-called color then this contrast of the gray insert is more prominent and i think that doesn't work with the vehicle it looks too bulkish then so i would rather pick it in darker colors and the contrast is not that high and now in our dark room <laughs> for today you can see the light signature really spectacular however the turning indicators here have activated the hazard lights at the moment they are not that spectacular and when it's dark and you activate the key fob Look at that, ooh, there's a nice light play here at the side. Also on the inside, that's really fancy. When you close it, here we go. Ooh, and at the side, ooh, the puddle light. Well, okay, I did this sh uh, shade or fading in effect here because the light comes from right here. Oh, cool, <laughs> look at that. I got a Cupra logo on my hand now. I got the Cupra logo. 
on my head. That's interesting. <laughs> and here, look at that. There's an entry, also illuminated. Now we've moved the car out to the sun that you can also see more of these nuances from the blue color. Now you see more crystalline effect. Also right here, that's very interesting. Lengthwise, 4 meter 32 or 170 inches. That's a little bit longer because of more overhang here of the Cupra Born comparison to the ID3, but the wheelbase is the same, as I said. Interesting that suspension-wise, this comes base with a sport suspension. Optional DCC, adaptive suspension. Then it's always lower than the ID3, that's very cool. In the front, 50 millimeters lower. In the back, 10 millimeters lower. That means it leans a little bit forward to have a sportier touch. That's what you, for example, do in aftermarket tuning quite often, that you have the front a little bit lower. That you know makes a more aggressive appearance. Very interesting. And yeah, look at that. I think design-wise, this is really, really well done. And my favorite part is really that front. And look at that here in the sun, you can even see these power dome situations a little bit better. Hey, and we also have another color here for you, so-called mist gray. It's more like a matte effect. It's not entirely matte color, but it's a mix of shiny and matte. I think once again, the front looks really striking and also works very well together with the copper situations. Here on this vehicle, we are also having 20 inch wheels, but they are in different styling. So also to give you some more variation and well, and it looks so sporty. How sporty does it drive? Different horsepower outputs available. 150 horsepower, 204. We know that already from the ID3. But then here, especially for the Cupra Born, there's an optional e-boost performance pack, and that brings horsepower figure up to 231. And then the acceleration figure is 6.6 .6 seconds or seven seconds, depending on the battery size and of course the weight. And look at that setup here, right? That's nice. Well, it's getting hotter here in Barcelona and I'm about to take my jacket off. And that's a really good thing because the winter in Germany has been quite long and also hard for us to produce. And talking about the heat or cold, there will be an optional heat pump available with this vehicle and that reduces range losses in winter times. Very important to go for that one when you are in a cold climate, not maybe necessary here in Barcelona. And for us, it's really special today, really, really special because for almost one and a half year, we've been also locked inside Germany. I hope we could still bring you great car coverage. And now being here in Barcelona again, which we were, you know, we were quite, quite often here, actually in normal non-corona times. So I really hope that you also enjoy our experience with a great setting for you today. I hope we could bring you more joy to your life in the corona times when you may be also in quarantine situations. So please stay healthy. Once again, we will keep you up with all the car reviews. Please subscribe if you haven't done so far. And now it's interior time. This is the car key, high gloss black. Ah, that might collect some scratches. Cool part logo here. Then key is entry and door closing sound. Mm, that sounds solid. Really cool. Then inside of the doors, two small let offs. First of all, hard pack material on the top part. Then we have these, you know, somehow feel less uh, controls of the side mirrors. We also criticized that in the ID3 here. Then you can, you have to look at it like where it's left or right. But what's cool here, first of all, the integration of the ambient light, nicely done. And then we have a lot of microfiber dynamica used together again with the typical Cupra copper essence. That's really fancy. And even fancier stuff here in the interior. Let's begin with the steering wheel, short information. Animal skin wrap is a standard here for the steering wheel. However, they're working on the solution, thinking about microfiber and also a leather wrap. We also had some consultations with them. They asked us what they should go for. And uh, yeah, I mean, microfiber would be awesome really here. That would fit also to the steering wheel with this racy atmosphere. Then look at that. Here yeah, the floor mats, also with a special you know, nice detailing here, it's really cool. And this is also then from recycling, also has a recycling batch here. So great idea. They are also working with a you know, special collective for ocean plastic use. And here, look at that, these bucket seats are standard. That's also a great move. Only that in the normal base version, the middle part would be in fabric. And optionally, you can go here for the Dynamica microfiber, once again with the special structure inside and then of course with the microfiber surface. What's better? Well, this looks more exclusive, looks more premium, feels also really premium. The fabric surface would be a little bit more breathable. Maybe, we have to see about that. But in both cases, 
it's definitely more breathable than slick materials. On the outside then you have some leather reduce and they also have a batch brand here, recycled vegan microfiber. So you see great steps forward and then they will complete also with the steering wheel later on. So I mean, this is really awesome sporty atmosphere and I really like the copper accentuations. They keep it throughout the brand. You could see here capacitive buttons in the steering wheel. We know we don't have too, you know, um, you know, too good experience with that. You see here that this appear when the car is off and then they light on again when you turn on the vehicle. There we go, here and then it's illuminated. To control them while driving, that's not that ideal, but it looks quite fancy at least. Well, you see a car is exciting when there's a lot to talk about and getting inside here now. These seats, they look really sporty, look really fancy, but are they also comfortable? That's the question and I can already tell you, yes, they are indeed. And you don't sit too low in this vehicle because they're also quite voluminous, these seats. So you have a good view to the front. Here in this case, then on the city of Barcelona, I mean, what a great view we have here for you. And yeah, indeed, they serve both purposes. They look sporty, they also keep you tight. Then also on the microfiber surface, you don't slide too much, but at the same time, you don't have the feeling like you would be in a you know, non-everyday driving life suitable sports vehicle. It is somehow you know, a compromise of, oh, you can also use it in everyday driving life. So um, I would have expected maybe a little bit lower seating position, but I mean, for most customers it will be better because getting in and out is quite easy. Here, headroom, one minus 86 or six with one. Let's see if I'm really in lowest position here. Here we go. So that comes quite close. You shouldn't be too much taller actually. This is here the panoramic roof. You have the slider function and then you can have this shade. And that's really important because we have now recently had a lot of EVs like Polestar 2 maybe or the Tesla Model 3. Um, you know, we experience when you have these panoramic roofs, they get a lot of heat on the interior. And still, even if they use special materials for the glass. So it's always great to have a shade here as well. You might remember the VW ID3, which felt budget alike, you know, in a lot of cases. But here, look at the amount of detail work they put into this vehicle. First of all, soft touch dashboard right here, also with a structured surface. Then this stamped in surface right here. Interesting, matte style. Copper accentuations once again, also the air vents. And this is very interesting here. When you have the blue microfiber seats, this dashboard here on top part, even, you know, a little bit soft, is also in this blue Nose in this Aurora blue shade, also fitting to the exterior color. The same as here for the middle console, also then in blue. You can also get the microfiber seats in gray, in this case, and also in the base version, this part and this part will be in black. So really good that it corresponds to the individual interior color. Once again, the capacitive buttons at the steering wheel, they are not the best to control, I think. That's a little bit hit and miss. Um, you get used to it somehow, but the real buttons would have been nicer there. And also here for the volume control, you either have it on the steering wheel with the capacitive buttons or here then with these sliders. So you can either press or slide and the same also goes for the temperature. You can also use the voice control for the temperature. That's possible. However, yeah, real knobs would have been better right there. They want to keep it simple and clean. 12 inch screen here by the way the id3 had the 10 inch screen they said cooper is a driver's vehicle that's why we want to have the screen bigger that when you drive faster more or sportier that you can still see things better <laughs> it's really interesting arguing uh, about this well, yeah yeah really really interesting and on the left side we have a small digital instruments and steering wheel up and down, in and out. And you can see here, the digital instruments move together with that. Why have they put it that small? You cannot change that much in these instruments as well. Um, you can have you know, information for the adaptive uh, cruise control or speed limit or something, but not so much else possible there to adjust. A um, little bit with a view like this, but that's basically it. Why? There is the head-up display, it's huge. An option and it works with the augmented reality function as we know from the ID3 that you have like arrows in your line of sight. That's why they kept this one here rather simple. Putting in the gears is possible right here, reverse or drive or park. It's actually quite simple and easy and you'll get easily used it. Interesting or very important driving modes at the steering wheel right here and this overboost function if you over that for the highest horsepower figure. You either get it when you do a kick down with the throttle or when you hear this direct hotkey to the Cupra mode, then you also get the highest horsepower output 
we are also very interesting to do that. Soon a separate take on the software of the infotainment system. Let's finish up the interior here. Once again, nice blue work here. It's a very soft surface. Also here, for your knees, left and right. So when you're shaking and you know some videos of, of mine, they have passengers and then <laughs> when I'm driving sporty, yeah, I bust it. Then, you know, it's soft when you hit the knees right there. Here, slide this one open. Cup holes are adaptive. Then there's cubby, cubby hole in the front. Key will be shown to you. And then we have also a nice microfiber surface here for the armrest. So you can slide it back or forward like this. And then when we put it up, there is an inductive charging pad for your smartphone. Now the infotainment system up close, you basically have two home menus. This one, or click here, and then you have a more classic home menu, which I would be more familiar with, to be honest. And GPS, like this. So they said actually, and here we have a map of Barcelona, you see here it could be a little bit more respo uh, responsive. The, this is a new software status and they promised us that when the car is launched and finally when customers get it, even newer software versions would be on there because the ID3 had massive software problems, but they are working together with Volkswagen on that issue and hopefully the software will be even faster than at launch. This is in the Apple CarPlay view, nice integration. And when you click here, for example, you always get to the air conditioning. But even to control this, mm, it's not that good in the overview, I think. Here again, Apple CarPlay hotkey. And let's listen to the music system right here. It's a Beats audio system, which is in here. You can also see in the speakers. That's actually quite nice. So good surround sound. So a lot of the details here appear really premium alike. The infotainment system, maybe some kind of a uh, let off. I would rather use the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and then don't care so much of the rest of the infotainment system. Um, yeah. Not sure if you have noticed yet, but I know that you also pay a lot of attention to style. So maybe you have seen that according to here, the blue microfiber suede here, I'm wearing the fitting blue microfiber suede shoes as well. So yeah. I really hope you noticed. <laughs> we can also take a look on the side as for the ambient lighting because then when it's dark then here you can see this, these are normal lights coming from the top part and interesting at the inside of the doors there once again you can see how the ambient lighting is integrated right here. Here in our darker studio we can also show you the different ambient lighting colors. Which one would you like? Let's check out the rear interior. Also hardback at the rear, that's of course more simple, but at least they have also some kind of structure in there. You also have the same floor mat structure for the rear and also the microfiber used for the seat, once again in this bluish color. And there's no middle tunnel, this is of course using then the EV platform properly with two USB-C chargers as well. So how's the seating position? You see that the bench goes a little bit backwards. That's on the one hand, for some, less comfortable, others say it's better. I think it's not that good. I prefer when it's more upright. However, you have enough legroom here. This is the seat as I would be sitting right there, 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1. So that's actually a lot of space in for a small vehicle. And headroom, that again, is a little bit close. So when you're approaching like 190 or 6 foot 2, then it will be more critical. But here in this case, then cool view through the panoramic roof from the rear. And since we have no middle tunnel, it's easy to move to the middle seat. And it's also easily possible to sit right here. It comes a little bit closer because I have more kind of a single seat setup, but it's also okay to sit on the middle seat. Overall, it's really comfortable and also very usable here in the rear. And once again, very nice materials they are using. Capolos not adaptive though. And then there's already a ski hatch right there. And you already fold the seats from here. I used to think it's the outside parts each. And like this, then we can fold the seat. And yeah, I would say, let's also check out the trunk. Every vehicle has to withstand the fight with the folding ruler here at Autocrew. So let's flip the logo right here to open it. And there we go. So very well usable. You see here there's a step to get all of the height in. The normal length here is about 32 inches or 80 centimeters. The width also about then a meter or 40 inches. And below here, so much space for equipment, but you know, barely. So they used all the space already here, here to get a height below the cover, almost 60 centimeters and 23 inches. A little bit more overall height, but that's already quite a lot. I have a better impression here with the backpack inside. Here we go, and I already fold one part of the seat. So it's a one-third, two-thirds split. 
And here we go into the seat as I would be driving. See around 160 centimeters or 64 inches. So overall very well usable, although we're still a small vehicle and that's again using the EV platform properly. Under the hood, there is sadly no front whatsoever. Same also with the VW ID3, but we can still use this setting here to talk about the battery and the range. So there will be three different battery sizes available. 45 kilowatt hours, 58 kilowatt hours or 77 kilowatt hours net. Recently someone told me, why are I going from up to down? Well, it's like in a list, you know, but size wise, I would rather have to say 45, 58, 77. Right? <laughs> what, what do you think about that? Well, and then the projected range figures for the middle battery, when we have our experience from the ID3, more like 400 kilometers or 250 miles. And for the bigger battery, probably more like 500 kilometers or um, yeah, 300 miles or something like that. And that's actually quite okay for a vehicle of that size. Of course, not as efficient as the Tesla motors, um, but at least you can very well work with that already. So, well, no frunk, but at least we have some nice power figures. And interesting also with this e-boost function that will be available for the mid-sized battery and the bigger battery. And because the 58 kilowatt hour battery is a little bit lighter than overall, therefore that one has the best acceleration figure of this 6.6 6 .6 seconds. And well, this is here what you call wireless charging because <laughs> the wall box is real, but of course this, you know, this pillar is fake. So um, yeah, that's our original wireless charging here live at Autogefühl. Whatever, what about the charging here? Then the figures will be, even if it's fake now, 11 kilowatt AC like this, or with the DC option like this, 125 kilowatt DC. Ah, that could be a little bit faster, but so far for this size of the vehicle, we can all say it's more or less enough. It's not super fast though. The smaller battery will be a little bit slower in recharging, but I can tell you that most will probably go for the 58 kilowatt hour or then even for the biggest battery. Since the range figures are not so cool yet, best is probably then to go for the biggest battery. I hope you enjoyed our presentation here today from Barcelona. We could maybe bring a little bit light in darkness for you, both with car entertainment and a lot of information. So stay tuned in our channel. See you next time.